Fiona and I'm going to present to you a review of the year 2015 in chess. Now let's come to the maybe shocking or bad or surprising things which in my opinion mark the year 2015. So I will start with maybe the most bizarre episode I have ever witnessed since starting playing chess and that was um, the forfeit of Wesley So in the US Championships for taking notes. So Wesley received a zero from the arbiter. He had been warned before he was uh, taking notes, writing down messages to himself under his score sheet and uh, after the first or the second warning he was given a zero. So a very strange story and yeah, if you haven't um, heard about it, uh, you should read up on it. Then second, Magnus Carlsen's uh, behavior at the World Blitz Chess Championship in Berlin. I'm sure most of you will have seen the videos of Magnus throwing pens around, swearing, just generally not being very happy and uh, showing it very obviously. Um, I think in a way it's great that Magnus shows that he is just human, that he is not happy when he's not doing well. But I think if all the players, and he's not the only ambitious player, he's not the only great player in the world, if all of them reacted the way he did in Berlin when they're having a bad tournament, I think the chess players wouldn't be a great players. And um, it's not setting the best example for young players. So that's my point too. Uh, point three is a uh, FIDE president Kirzan Illuminjov uh, temporarily stepping down as he was uh, put on a sanction list uh, by the US Treasury for uh, allegedly having links to the Syrian government. So I'm sure we will hear a lot more about this in the future and politics is in my field of predilection so I leave that to others. Um, in fourth place, again, this is in no particular order, in fourth place is something which was very close to my heart and that's a problem, uh, again, linked to cheating. So we do obviously have an issue with cheating, but that is unfortunately at the moment leading to another issue and that is an issue of uh, witch hunting or paranoia. I think in the last year, a few players and the most famous case, um, obviously, was the one of Mihaila Sandu at the Women's European Championship in Georgia. She had started her event with five out of five and she was accused by a group of people of cheating. I was there again. It was a very difficult situation. She ended up losing all her games and uh, I think we should make sure that things like that don't happen in the future. Then uh, fifth point, um, the consequences of the introduction of the K-Factor 40. I think this is something FIDE will have to rethink. I mean, it's always great to see the rise of young players, but they have risen in an astronomical way. We now see people gaining three to 400 rating points in the space of a month or two. So um, something will have to be done about that. My sixth point is the disappointing fourth place of the French team at the European Team Chess Championship in Reykjavik. So uh, this was the event I mentioned. Russia won the gold medal, Armenia took silver, uh, Hungary bronze. And those three teams, Armenia, Hungary and France, were on equal points. And many people uh, on site were surprised that France ended up being the ones missing out on the medals that they had drawn Hungary and beaten Armenia and arguably faced the strongest team. So a very disappointing uh, final result for the French team. Another bizarre and marking event of the year was uh, Magnus Carlsen's loss on time against Veselin Topalov in the first round of Norway chess on home third. Uh, Magnus wasn't aware of the time control. He thought he would get extra time after move 60, but he didn't. So on move 60, he just let his time run out and lost some time. Uh, so yeah, one of the marking moments of the year again. That leads us to his opponent in that game was Veselin Topalov. And that's my point number eight. Veselin Topalov was arguably uh, the player who was in the worst form towards the end of the year. Uh, he had, Veselin Topalov had won the Norway chess tournament after that lucky win against Magnus Carlsen in the first round. However, uh, at the London Chess Classic, he started the tournament as the leader of the Grand Chess Tour and many thought he had good chances of winning it, but he had a 
terrible event in London. He was in very poor form. He finished in last position and that led to him in the January rating list falling down to 2780 and position number nine. Let's remember he started the year in position number three and with a rating above 2800. However, knowing uh, that Veselin is the fighter that he is and a great player, I'm sure he will be back at his best in no time. Uh, again, I just talked about the London Chess Classic, which was the final stage of the Grand Chess Tour, which leads me to my ninth point, and that is the Grand Chess Tour tiebreak system. A lot, again, has been said and written about this, and I'm sure many of you still wonder how come Maxime Vachilagraf after uh, beating Anish Giri in a playoff in London, still came third. So he did beat Anish and then he lost to Magnus in the final, but uh, his match against Anish had no incidents on the standings and he finished third. And by finishing third, he narrowly missed out on a qualification spot for the Grand Chess Tour 2016. So again, that led to a lot of controversy and uh, I'm sure we'll hear more about this. And then finally, to conclude my review, is point number 10, and that is chess making it to mainstream news for all the wrong reasons. So I have mentioned the cheating scandal with uh, Nigalice, which was hailed as the second toilet gates, made it to uh, the news worldwide. Then there was Kirsan, again, um, making it to the news for all the wrong reasons. There was his story about being adopted uh, by aliens. Now it's his sanctions by the US uh, Treasury. And then there are two more stories. I think most of you will remember uh, Nigel Short's article for New and Chess, which had um, incredible consequences as he made it to pretty much every newspaper you can imagine. Uh, worldwide articles were published. He made it to numerous uh, TV channels, news reports uh, for his statement about women's chess. In my personal opinion, and I've talked about this about uh, with a few people, I think the whole thing was blown out of proportion. But again, it's not the sort of thing you want to hear just uh, making the headlines for. You don't want to read in the newspaper Nigel Short saying women can't play chess. So it wasn't um, great, but I think for once that wasn't Nigel's fault. And then finally, a story that occurred uh, in the US and which some of you might not heard about, uh, it concerns a Brazilian GM, Andre Diamant, and uh, Andre Diamant was accused of paying his two-year-old son uh, for drinking alcohol. So he had to flee, well, he fleed the country and uh, this is still an ongoing case, but again, not great news for chess or chess players. So yeah, I think that's it for my review of 2015. Uh, you can read all the details with pictures, with links, in my uh, accompanying Chess24 article. So um, 2016 promises to be another very exciting chess year. We have the candidates tournament in March, then we will have the Chess Olympiad in Baku in September, and finally a World Championship match to conclude the year. So I'm very much looking forward to another thrilling year of chess. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.